whether you're new to ancient battles or have been gaming them for years, you may be confused by the dizzying array of rules to choose from. What are some of today's most played rules and are they worth your time? Carl and Austin look at six popular rule sets in our Ancient Rules Roundup. Hey everyone, welcome to Mark's Game Room. I'm Austin and we're actually in the club with our very own Indiana Jones, Carl here. Um, you know, Carl, we're here for an Ancient Rules Roundup yes. and you know, we have all these rules in front of us and I'm sure people have had moments where are like, you know, what can I do to get into the hobby? You know, what are some things I might want to look out for? Um, we have some new and old here, but I I'm very curious to hear what your thoughts are on ancient rule sets. What do you look for? How do you rate them? Just generally tell us what your thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, I love all periods of wargaming, but ancients is my job. I'm an ancient historian and Latin and Greek teacher. And so for me, this is my bread and butter. I love talking about these. Um, I think we can boil down what we look for as a club in ancients rule sets to three big things. Uh, and number one for me would definitely be does the rule set depict the geometry of ancient warfare? Lines, are you encouraged to keep your units uh, uh, lined up in a battle line with cavalry on the flanks, right? Trying to encircle your opponent, right? That whole feel. But also on top of that too, there's also the heroics of it all. You have these larger than life figures, you know, Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, even Hannibal, and you know, so many other historical figures who can charge into the, the field, who can use their genius or, or maybe even their brawn to, to sway the course of a battlefield. And, and to me, that's, that's a lot of fun when it comes to ancients. Absolutely. I would say number three, and definitely for me, the one I look for the most, does the rule set depict the units of the time in a way that feels right for those specific units, those specific armies? You know, do the pike phalanxes roll forward unstoppably? Do the Romans uh, have line relief and throw pila at people? And most most importantly, do the elephants charge in, you know, screaming with their tusks and trunks, I'm, right? I'm, I mean, <laughs> if, if, you, if you hear that... If you if you hear that at, at, on the battlefield or at the tabletop, you you know you're in for a fun or, or maybe disastrous time. Especially if he does it near you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're we're really excited to talk about all of these, and uh, we're gonna jump right into it. Absolutely, I can't wait. The first rule set we're gonna talk about today is DBA, um, and in this we're kind of including all the DBA offshoots, you know, DBM, Triumph, all of which have their own pluses and minuses and are really good broadly talking about the rule sets inspired by this. Um, this was a big hit for our club for a bunch of reasons. Um, number one, I think it fits our criteria point for linearity and geometry of uh, ancient battles really well. In DBA, you keep your units lined up or you're gonna get clobbered, right? You've gotta Absolutely. keep those battle lines. Um, but I mean, to that point though, I mean, there's there's a lot of complexity with the movement and the measuring, and sure, it, it can line up well, but you really have to, you know, take care that you're not, you know, infracturing some of those rules. And, and to add to that, there's also not a, a lot of heroics. You know, you have a leader on the board, you know, it, it's just there. It's not really like Alexander rushing into the fray to like fight some Persians, you know, like this guy over here. Um, so so that that's another counterpoint to that. That's very true. Um, Point number three in terms of how the units feel, I do think that the matchup table in DBA and DBA Inspire games does give you the feel of how the different units interact with each other, mm -hmm. but... It, I think it depends on the scenario. Um, you can have some scenarios where they're like wildly different units and that feels fine, uh, but if it's just kind of same-ish, you don't really get that distinction. I feel like I'm playing the red team, you're playing the blue team, and are, am I really Roman? Are you really, you know, yeah. Gaelic or whatnot? Anyways. That's super fair. Um, but overall, our club really liked it, and it does have the positive of you only need 12 bases for an army, mm -hmm. so it can be really easy to get into and easy to play. So I recommend that everybody try this out at least once. Absolutely. Uh, but besides DBA, uh, we have some other rule books to uh, talk about. Yeah, some we were a little less enthused about. So let's start with uh, Warhammer Ancient Battles. Mm. Um, I don't know if we're actually allowed to talk about Games Workshop products in Mark's game room. I think we get struck by lightning uh, or something. We, we, we're gonna have to leave here pretty quickly after <laughs> this. Uh, but uh, Warhammer Ancients Battles, as the name implies, is basically Warhammer Fantasy from Games Workshop turned into an Ancients game. Um, in terms of its criteria, I actually, this game was a miss for me because for one, I don't think it does a great job with the linearity of ancient battles. You're kind of just have those Warhammer-y clumps of units 
going around. I, I am a Warhammer fan, you know, what I, I, that's how I got into the hobby, playing like 40k, but you know, on some of the fantasy and some of the like the Age of Sigmar stuff I've done, I totally get what you're saying there. Uh, this is very much a reskin, but you do get a lot of the heroics. Oh yeah, you know, it does you, fit Criterion number two. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yes, you're not casting magical spells or anything, but you do have a guy adding extra attacks. You do have a guy that can sort of hold his own and whatnot, and I mm. think that's where this rule set does shine a little bit. You can get a little more beer and pretzels and have fun with it. Yeah, I think Criteria 3 is where this rule set really falls down, though. Um, there is not, I think, a lot of ancient flavor in this rule mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. It really is just Warhammer with a candy coating uh, of ancients over it. You know, a lot of the characters and things will feel familiar to you if you've played Warhammer Fantasy. And so I think it misses out on a lot of stuff like Roman line relief or, mm -hmm. or things mm -hmm. like that. I think it could be better as far as that goes. So um, overall, this one was kind of a miss for us, but we are gonna be using it in an upcoming game, right? Yes, actually, uh, we're gonna be utilizing the Siege and Conquest rules uh, while also using some of the, the points from this rule book, but uh, we're gonna try and do some stuff for the Hundred Years' War with, uh, with Siege. Nice. All right, moving on to a rule set that was a big hit um, for us that I am a huge fan of actually is uh, To the Strongest. Yeah, so To the Strongest is a grid-based game. So, ooh, no measurements, ooh, right? It would be right. good for some of the more <laughs> touchy people in our club, right? Um, but uh, I really like this rule set. Um, I think it fits criteria one really well. The grids keep you in a linear battle formation, right? It's impossible not to be in lines, right? <laughs> I mean, if it's not, something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. The um, elephants have run through. <laughs> yeah. um, and for criteria number two, the heroics, um, I, the leaders in this game can risk themselves in battle. So it has a lot of that going on. And for criteria number three, the units, I actually think this game is the best of any game out there. Ooh, all um, right. The all author, right. Simon Miller, has produced these army lists which aren't just armyless, but have special unit types and abilities for everything. Um, even when I'm playing other games, I use the army list from this game to build my scenarios because they're that good. So I think for criteria number three, this game is the best of all of them. Um, plus elephants are hot garbage in this game. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> all right. so. I see this massive book here, and you know, normally when I see rule books, there may be about a quarter of that <laughs> at most. But you have to tell me what this is, because this is this glorious image of a guy on the front cover with like this blood stain. I don't know, what's that? That's not a glad, it's a giant. No, it's this cult piece. Um, see, Indiana Jones here, he knows everything. <laughs> but please tell me about this rule set, because I, I, I want to know. So, this, if you haven't heard of Larte Laguerre, uh, it is probably the most popular Ancients rule set on the market right now. Um, it's really big in the UK and there's a big competition scene here. But I have to say, um, this giant rule book contained within it is very little flavor. Uh, it was a big miss for me. Um, I don't know. Uh, this game is kind of a descendant of DBA, but they were like, you know what DBA could use? Damage tokens and lots of clutter <laughs> and more unit types. Ugh. Um, but, but more is better, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Rule book size. Um, <laughs> this game uh, does have a very strong sense of linearity, uh, so it does fit our criteria number okay. one really well. Now, this guy on the cover, is he the hero that I've been looking for? Is, is he <laughs> in the book? Is, is he going to run into the battlefield and, and change the course of history? Well, he can give you one to three pips when you roll for his command. That's, okay. really, <laughs> that's really all the generals kind of do in this game. There's oh. not a ton of uh, cool heroism or anything. Mm. And for uh, point number three, I think it's kind of um, up in the air how you feel about that. Mm -hmm. um, the There is some some attempt at getting unit types and flavor in here. But honestly, I just felt that these rules were so complicated um, when I played them that you kind of felt like you were playing the game and not playing an ancient battle. So mm -hmm. rather than thinking about like how ancient units worked, I was thinking about like how can I best ring out you know, right. some, some benefits from this game system. But I will say this game is immensely popular. And just like DBA, you don't need a huge number of figures. So if you want to get in tournament gaming, which is what mm -hmm. this game's designed for, um, it is a really good choice. But go. it was a miss for, for us. Okay. This one actually is my favorite uh, of Ancient Sets, and it's probably the one we... He, he talks about it all the time. Age of Hannibal um, is, I think, the best of the best in terms of being fast play, but also having a lot of flavor. Um, in terms of our criteria, let's see. 
I mean, it, it's it's a square base, square base, unit, unit. So like when you start the battle, it's all lined up and geometrical. But like in, in some of the games we played, they the lines touch and then things kind of go a little bit crazy. But I wasn't too much, I don't think. To really, oh, yeah. yeah. And the cavalry coming around and flanking is a huge right. part of the game. Uh, I think it handles that really well in criteria number one. For number two, uh, I think heroism, this game does a really good job. You can give leaders different traits, right, right. giving them the ability to be more or less heroic and even have single combat yes, absolutely. between the leaders, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, and for criteria number three, I think this game is one of the few on the market that actually makes a really, really solid attempt to do Roman legions with a special flipping lines ability and the pike phalanxes feel really good and powerful though that pike phalanx drill nonsense is i throw that out greg there's no such thing i don't know what that what that means anyway uh but you don't need to play with that just throw out that rule like we do um it's it's really uh got a lot of flavor and i think the unit types feel distinct and it's kind of a toolkit too so if you want to make a unit that's not represented they give you all these traits that mm -hmm. you can use to create those so yep. i really mm -hmm. like this rule set Oh, we've got to finish off with uh, oh. one more in the hall of dis dishonor, the hall of, of infamy. Uh, we're going to talk about a game that didn't work so much for us, which is Hail Caesar. Mm. So, uh, <laughs> Hail Caesar is, um, well, you like saltine crackers, right? I, I do like saltine crackers. <laughs> I like them with soup, but, you know, they're fine crackers. <laughs> they, ha they don't have a lot of flavor, though, right? It might fill you up, but there's really no flavor. Hail Caesar is the... Um, Warlord Games version mm -hmm. for Ancients. It's kind of just like their game Black Powder, okay. um, which means that if you want to provide the flavor, it's kind of up to you. So in terms of our criteria for number one, um, yeah, it does kind of allow you to create linear warfare. There is um, support rules, which encourage you to have people in line. Mm -hmm. uh, it, does, it does fulfill that. Number two, it has that thing from Warmaster and Black Powder where you roll to activate units. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. could roll and like, oh, I guess I don't take a turn this turn, and I hate that. I really See, dislike that. Some games do it better than others, but I agree. Having the the roll and then be like, oh, wow, I can't do anything. Oh, I'm yeah. having so, so much fun just standing here and, and getting walloped. <laughs> As for point three, whether it has distinct unit types, it has a toolkit of stuff you can add to units. Um, but unfortunately, if you want to get more interesting or varied unit types, you've got to buy like, six different books with mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. supplements and army lists and stuff so it's kind of a a weak point there uh yeah i think it's very flavorless and kind of generic in terms of the units i think what i like about it is i like the the title the title is really cool hail caesar we oh, are about yeah. to die salute you that kind of thing yeah, I mean, yeah if you're gonna be taking no turns and just dying from your opponent smacking <laughs> you that that would Dude, be the result so th there's also <laughs> some great art in there Oh, absolutely. I've said some nice absolutely. things. See, we've said some nice things. Absolutely. Um, and we've got uh, not another review, but we've got a kind of a promo for an upcoming rule set that we haven't tried yet, but we're going to try. So right. you want to tell us about that, Austin? Awesome? Yeah, so Swordpoint is a rule set that we haven't played in the club yet. So we're just painting up the figures for it. We're getting everything ready. Uh, but we're actually thinking of doing a Hundred Years War uh, set of battles for it. So, I mean, I, I went to Agincourt not too long ago to see that battlefield, and we want to do like some Harfleur stuff maybe, but this is just a stay tuned. Uh, we're definitely going to try out Sword Point to see if it's worth its salt. Uh, but to stay, you know, in theme with our ancients, they have a supplement. Worth its salt. I see what you did there. Because the Romans. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I guys, this obviously is not um, the complete landscape of every ancients game ever published. But we hope we've given you a really good landscape of what's out there. Um, but if you have other ancients rule sets that you like or want us to try, please. Go ahead and put them in the comments. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Mark's Game Room. Uh, join us very soon for our next big video, the Napoleonic campaign that we're going to be starting. I'm very excited. I love French people so much. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you do. <laughs> but go down there and smash that, that subscribe button like the elephant's going to smash you. <laughs>